stupid bitch. You can't make a deal with a darky. Shut up. Burn the witch. In terms of the concept for every season, Ryan really comes in with a strong idea of what the concept should be. It's usually something even just simple, like an insane asylum or witches, the first season haunted house. And so you come in sort of with that idea. We're a dying breed, Zoe. I think the main themes of all of the seasons of American Horror Story, which is what I love about them so much, is about the disenfranchised and about reclaiming your own power and finding the power within yourself. There are many things that have been shown in the season as, as it's gone into details of who the people are that are part of this coven. So it's about a group and all the things that a group means. You know, there's obviously tremendous conflict is an understatement. You know, the fact that many of us have <laughs> tried to kill one another or whatever. Yeah, did that hurt? No, okay, good. Okay. One of the main themes this, this season in Coven is the idea of survival. There's all these bullseye targets on you and everyone wants you dead and you don't even know who your enemies are. I think some of the themes that we are addressing are fertility, celebrity, loyalty, feminism, ageism. <gasps> Women, we have so many issues that we're concerned about, and I think we managed to hit upon many, if not most of them. The history of witches is, has always been a fear of women, a fear of the power of women, the fear patriarchal societies have about not being able to control things they don't understand, wanting to keep them down. But there's also a theme about youth and regeneration, passing things on from one generation to the next generation. Don't be afraid, use it. Kill me for the sake of the coven. Fiona's definitely not one to follow the rules and how she's leading this coven. <laughs> she has really let her duties be cast aside. Instead, she's followed a very self-centered path of pleasure. I mean, I could torment myself over the selfish detours I've taken, but what good would it do now? Hmm? Fiona, Jessica Lange, is hideously amoral and completely narcissistic and yet utterly sympathetic at the same time. That is not easy to do and it isn't done very often in television or in film. My entire teaching philosophy has been an abject failure. She's a by-the-book kind of gal and she's a very good person. She believes in rules and she's the polar opposite of her mother. I like a witch who knows how to fight. You've done this cup in a great service. Zoe's she wants to be loyal to something. She found this family, kind of, and she has a purpose now. She wants to do something good. It's like season one all over again. Dead bodies. Whereas someone maybe like Fiona or Madison are very self-absorbed. A bubblehead with crotchless panties. And you're a dried up old Hot Pocket, but I don't judge. I was just like, this is a dream role because it's, it's fun, it's also dramatic, and it's, it's kind of like everything rolled into one. So technically, I'm part of your tribe. Is this where we all sing Kumbaya? Bitch, I will eat hey, you. Hey, 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 hey. I don't think Queenie ever felt like she fit in to the Rome Show Academy. She thinks of being a witch, especially a Salem witch, is something very different than what she is. I had a Stevie Nicks obsession, and I just sort of turned the dial up on it. I just kind of went full throttle. Who are you? When I turned around and said, you must be Misty, I'm Stevie Nicks and she fainted. <laughs> I was really shocked. That was such a real faint. And then Jessica Lang steps over her and comes up to me and gives me a kiss and says, you owe me five bucks. And I'm like, I'm in it. And it's really been great. Good luck, girls. I think Kyle is, is completely different from Kit and Tate, um, especially Frank and Kyle. Uh, he's, <laughs> is that okay if I call him Frank and Kyle? He's just completely lost and scared and alone and, and doesn't know what's going on. I don't want to hurt you. I'll be okay. Zoe's first power, I don't think it's something she's very enthusiastic about or she would consider special. <laughs> and Zoe's a very sensitive, kind, sweet girl who just happens to have a killer vagina. Killer vagina's no good. 
Not good. Yeah, well, she's got a real, yeah, a witchy killer vagina, which is different than a regular killer vagina, I guess. There's a lot of walking around my house doing like this and like for, like seeing what my hand motion was gonna be because on the day you have to have, have your, your witch motion that you do. And I, uh, I have a few, so that, that was fun to get to play with. <laughs> I would do anything Ryan Murphy asked me to do at any time whatsoever, as clearly evident with what he's had me do. You know, this year gouging my own eyes out with some garden shears, you know, it's just all in a day's work. Are you a witch or something? Why? Well, I was hoping you were. And maybe you'd know how to kill me. <laughs> well, I certainly can't say they don't write good parts for women anymore. Ryan, one of the things he does so uniquely is right for women and right for so many women. Complicated women and strong women and weak women and just all kinds of women. There's something for everybody. When you watch the show, you think, gosh, there's a character that everyone can relate to on some level. If you're gonna make a show about women, if you're gonna write great female parts, then you want great people to, to play them. And I think that there are people like Kathy Bates and Angela Bassett and obviously Jessica, that's some serious acting chops. I'm sorry for your loss. You want to buy it? You know, it tickles you to be writing those scenes. You know, you're, you know you're writing for those actresses, you know? Just doing your entrance and your exit. So, so long. <laughs> ah. And of course, I love working with my friend Jessie, and she and I have done several movies together, and we've gone out to dinner a few times here, and it's been great. Y'all have a good time. Oh God, Bye, honey. Tonight. I love you. I love Bye -bye. you, too. See you later. Where's my family? Return them to me. They never left. You would never see this, you know, group of women who are such individually are just so phenomenal. Their talents are so amazing on display and together. It really ups your game. Don't think that they didn't suffer because they did greatly. Marie Laveau and Madame Lollerie are two incredibly famous New Orleans characters. I'll finish this one myself. We knew we needed to cast someone amazing for the role of Marie Laveau, who's a real character, and she's the voodoo queen, and we wanted somebody who could be in the same room and be the enemy of Jessica Lange and be able to, frankly, not get her butt kicked by her. Take your skinny ass and that filthy thing and get out. That character she's playing is coming from a place in her that really is that. I mean, she has that strength and that charisma and that presence. Beautiful. She's able to bring back from the dead, you know, zombies. She's also able to, you know, if a woman is having trouble, you know, with fertility issues. And she can also cook up a mean pot of gumbo. <laughs> but when injustice has occurred, she, uh, you know, has to call on some, <laughs> you know, not so nice things to occur. We got some business to attend to. What we have here is the Minotaur that you've seen in uh, episode one, two, and three of American Horror Stories, played by Amir Baraka. At first, we put a, a huge cowling on his neck to make his neck look bigger, and then this is more of a mask that we kind of slip over his head. But if you want to go all the way open, it's this. Special effects makeup team is unbelievably good, and we're so lucky to have them. To see something that's as far out as a minotaur who was a tortured human being and is now a vengeful, mythical creature, and to have it actually come to life. You have a better job than that, because I don't. <laughs> and Lollerie is also this, like, you know, when you go down there, if you want to go on any of the tours of the French Quarter, you have to go by the Lollerie Mansion because the stories that were told about this woman are so compelling, especially to a horror fan, because they're so awful. They're so unbelievable that you think it almost doesn't feel like it's real. I think I'm gonna like it here. It's a character that I've really been able to throw myself into with abandon and with great joy. But let's start with your toes. I know that sounds strange to say about someone as horrendous as her, but uh, I mean, ever since we're little kids, who wouldn't want to play the scary monster? You think we could be true friends? The bulk of my scenes are with Kathy and she's sort of my favorite lady ever. 
I just love sitting across from her in a scene and just watching her. It's almost like acting school. I've enjoyed working with Gabrielle Sidibe. I was crossing my fingers that I would get a chance to work with her, and my dream came true. Roots, the saga of an American family. You are gonna watch all eight hours of it. Oh, God. It's tragic Delphine is not able to take that final step and rehabilitate herself and realize that she's been a fool. It's called repentance. Oh, repentance my ass. I do hope that we've been able to highlight in our own way the evils of racism, the stupidity of racism. I hope I've accomplished that. I think the genius of Ryan's creation is that there are different levels of horror and different levels of being scared. And each season seems to tap into a different kind of terror. I'm told it starts as a tingle in the cooch. <laughs> <laughs> what we have is a tingle in the cooch. <laughs> Started the tingle in the cooch. <laughs> okay. I think what's awesome about this season is that there's a lot of humor involved. Ben. Shh, don't never speak it aloud. It's that powerful. You have no idea. I've always found that there is this wonderful dark humor in American Horror Story, even from season one, sort of sprinkled in there. It's definitely the most this season. Bravo, Delphine! Magnifique! This was the least scary season of all, I think. And although I loved it very much and had a great time doing it, my preference is the darker stuff. I think people are embracing Coven as um, even more so than the first two seasons because it's a little more accessible, as happy as I was, and I think we all were with Asylum and what we created in Asylum. It was a really grim show. <laughs> she left the melon baller in there. She's growing old and forgetful. <laughs> I love American Horror Story because over the years you get to create sort of meta story arcs. And so we have the great idea of Taisa and Evan being lovers again. We get to see Jessica and Sarah Paulson in a different relationship every season. This one they're playing mother and daughter. I, yeah, I was obsessed with Jessica in season one and we had a relationship and this year, um, I'm not sure we have the same kind of relationship, but we're we work we're definitely tied, and uh, I love it. Girls, you may begin. What's fun about every season of the show is that we never know exactly where the story is going along with the audience. So we come up with things that surprise ourselves. I mean, right up until the very last episode, we were arguing over who the next Supreme should be. It's almost like juggling balls. So when you say it might be Madison, you're immediately saying, but then Queenie has these powers and Nan has these powers. So you're, you're almost giving equal weight to each of the characters at any given time that any one of them could be the next Supreme. And we argue passionately about who we think should be the next Supreme and why. And we, you know, we, we take strong positions on things. And oftentimes we don't agree. It just ends up being, okay, you know, somebody in charge has to say, this is, this is how it's gonna be. You think I could be the next Supreme? I'd stake your life on it. I did not know I was going to be the next Supreme until Ryan Murphy called me about a week before Christmas to say, lady, I want to tell you you're the Supreme. And I was like, wait, what? How did, wait, huh? It was never going to be Thaisa, even though I think everyone thought that, but on a show like American Horror Story, if they're leading you in one direction, it, odds are it's probably not that. And I know that Ryan loves an underdog, and so I thought it might be Nan or Queenie, and, but Cordelia was an underdog too, so. The whole. The one true supreme. Although uh, I did notice on Twitter that a lot of fans were pointing out that the Lady of the Seven Powers is the image that flashes on screen when my name appears in the opening credits. And it had been like that from the beginning, which was a weird kind of like, Ooh. To me, the whole season is about mothers and daughters. You know, there's that great scene at the end with Jessica and Sarah, which really kind of says it all about what that relationship was and how even the worst mother-daughter relationship is the most important relationship in both those people's lives. You were the monster in every one of my closets. My favorite moment was my scene with Jessica Lang in the finale episode. 
I'm crying for the girl in me who dies when you die. Then kill them both right now. It felt like it had the full weight and the gravitas and the breadth of everything that had happened between our characters for the entire season. Women who identify as witches are born as such. And their abilities, which we call powers, are part of who they are. In many ways, the journey of Cordelia, the journey of the show, is these people accepting really who they are. And the coven is trying to be something it isn't, which is trying to be something shameful, something that can't be exposed to the world. As soon as they realize, like, no, that's not who we are. Actually, who we are are people out here. We're, we're members of this society, we're members of this culture. We're just different then a great relief comes to them and they see that the world is ready to accept them. I know together we can do more than survive. It's our time to thrive.